In this simple heat exchanger example, the hardest part is understanding the givens and the drawing. We are told that a hot air stream, which is this stream over here, is used to heat cold air, which is this stream over here, in a heat exchanger and we are given this drawing. So the first thing that we need to understand is that we are expected to know that the heat exchanger will be partitioned in this way so that there is a hot side and a cold side and that these parts do not communicate material between one another but that there will be an energy transfer between these two sections. We are told that we may assume that CPs are constant uh, independent of the state of the air um, and we are told that uh, the flow of the hot air is 50% of the flow of the cold air. So let's give ourselves some uh, some names for these things. So let's say this is A, B, C and D and let's start writing down the equations that we have. So this uh, problem does not require us um, to know the value of the CP of A. Since we're exchanging materials between one another, um, we don't have to go and look that up. Uh, we can relatively easily see that there will be uh, two different ways of approaching this problem. Uh, the first way we will simply do a total energy balance and that will mean that we have um, n equals out and we will therefore have the enthalpy uh, in A plus the enthalpy in C equal to the outstreams QB plus QD. So for all four of these, we may write a equation of the form QI is equal to MI CP bar I. And then we can use the temperature of the stream minus some arbitrary reference. Now we are told that the rate at which these um, cold air streams is fed is twice the rate at which the hot air flows and we can assume that uh, the flow rate throughout each section is constant. So A is going to be equal to uh, B a is going to be equal to twice C and C is going to be equal to D. So if we say that in mass terms, we will say MA is equal to MB, MD is equal to MC, and MA is equal to twice MC. Now we can reason that since the CPs are all the same, they will end up uh, dividing out of all of these terms. So we've got four Q terms, they all contain the same CP term. If we, if we were to substitute them in, they would all cancel out. Uh, we can also see that all of the masses will end up being written in terms of MC. So in other words, for a and B, we will write uh, 2MC, and for D and C, we will write uh, just MC. So uh, let's do that substitution. Clearly, see the CPs are going to cancel out of these equations, and that all of these uh, masses will end up becoming in terms of MC. Once we've done that substitution, we find that MC 
also cancels out of these equations. Multiplying out makes it clear that we have the same number of TRs on both sides of this equation. So this one cancels that one and this one cancels that one. We are left with a simple equation. This is a satisfying result as we can interpret this as saying the temperature of B, this final temperature, will be wherever that started plus the energy transferred from the hot stream which is flowing at half the rate of the cold stream. Another way of solving this problem is to reason through the uptake and exchange of energy. So we can say that uh, Q is the energy transferred uh, from the hot stream into the cold stream. And so that must be equal on both sides to, on the one hand, it must be equal to what we previously defined as QC minus QD, and it must also be equal to QB minus QA. Since both of these terms are differences in the same stream, it becomes a lot easier to write down the uh, energy difference. There are similar cancellations as before, and we are a small set of manipulations away from the same answer. We find, unsurprisingly, the same relationship and just for completeness, when you plug in all those numbers, you get 220 degrees Celsius.